In the last episode we checked out the distressed painting technique and now we're going to use two oil techniques and we're going to add a pin wash. With these steps we're definitely entering the weathering stage. If you don't want to miss any episode, please take a second and subscribe, every support is much appreciated. Thanks! With some ail colors like the Uptilon 502, some soft brushes and the Windsor and Newton odorless thinner, I start the oil dot filter technique. It is pretty easy to apply, I use a cardboard as a palette. So the oil gets a little bit soaked out of the oil colors. Then I apply many random dots to the model from each color. The dark colors are focused on the corners and the lighter ones on the plain surfaces. But randomness makes the effect interesting. Don't use only colors that match the base coat. Take some complementary ones like this yellow or a magenta for the Russian green. Now after you have applied the oil dots, take a soft white brush with just a little bit of thinner and start blending. You can blend the oil colors in a swirling or tapping motion on the horizontal surfaces. Work on some smaller areas and when you finish blending them, clean the brush and continue in the next area. The aim is to create many different filters in different areas to create a more faded and interesting look on the base coat. When the oil colors are almost dry, I take a dry, soft and white brush and wipe over the surface to blend it even more or smoothen out the oil colors. Don't moisten the brush too much. It should not create a wash when blending the oil colors. The oil cores should be blurred over the area where you applied them. Only on the third surface I use the right amount of thinner as you can see. Now on to the vertical surfaces. There you apply the oil dots in the same manner as before. But to blur the oil dots you wipe the brush up and down, still focusing on one area until you proceed. I move my brush up and down, not like when you are creating streaks. And again, don't moisten your brush too much or it creates a wash. After it's done, I clean the markings with a brush and some thinner. Sometimes it blends the markings nicely in the oil dot technique, but this time I wanted them clearly visible. Again, after the oil colors dried, I wiped over the whole surface with a soft white brush. Now on to the second oil technique which I got from Uncle Nightshift. This would be creating shadows to add more contrast. I use the oil color shadow brown from Abteilung 502 and dilute it just a little bit. Then I paint around protruding things like hatches and for example the attachment between the hull and the turret. When the color settled a little bit, I try to blur it with a soft brush. This technique is used to add more contrast as I mentioned before. You could also add some highlights on the edges of the surfaces, but I think for really work with lights and shadows, I would apply the color modulation technique on the base coat.
In my opinion, the pin wash or in aircraft modeling, the panel line wash should be applied to every model. It is easy and fast to apply and lets the details really pop out. For scale models like tanks and other vehicles, I almost every time use this dark wash from the old company MIG Productions before they got rebranded. It is very nicely pigmented, dries fast and you can clean it up easily with odorless thinner. Ok, I apply the wash with a standard brush and if it works, I let the color flow into the recesses or around nuts and bolts. After the wash dried a little bit, I clean the lines with a brush lightly moistened with odorless thinner to get a crisp pin wash as possible. Did I already mention that it creates a nice contrast and that I like contrast on my models? It often depends on the surface how easily you can apply the wash. Glossy is easy and matte can be almost impossible to let the wash flow. If the wash doesn't flow at all, you can first moisten the recesses, then you can apply the wash which should now flow more easily. Between every technique with oils, I let the model dry for several hours or almost a day, so I won't wipe the first oil layers away. With the oil techniques and the pin wash applied, it creates a very nice surface, ready to apply some chipping and then dust and mud. What do you think after these first steps of weathering? I have an idea for a little vignette for this mighty green monster, but I don't know if it will be entertaining enough to make an episode about it. Let's see. Ok, thank you very much for watching until this point. A big shout out to you all who are leaving nice and motivating comments on each video, because it takes a lot of time to make these and every support is needed. So take care and see you in the next video.